Jay Haynes with the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video I'll be teaching an absolute beginner's lesson on the basics of how to use nodes in DaVinci Resolve. Before we get started, please do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. When you first open DaVinci Resolve, you'll most likely land on the cut page. We're going to jump over to the edit page and put a clip onto the editor timeline. Because this is an absolute beginner's lesson on nodes, from here on out I will work on the color page, but the fusion page uses nodes as well. Understanding nodes on the color page is a lot easier though. The windows on the color page include the gallery, the media pool, the effects, the nodes, the clips, and the timeline. You can turn on and off most of these with buttons up here. If you have not done anything to the nodes of a clip, this will be the default setup. Notice that a blank placeholder node exists to start. To add another node, simply right click on a node and select Add Node, Add Serial. This adds a node after the node you clicked, and they are in a serial sequence. What that means is the output of one node becomes the input for the next node in a linear fashion. So this green dot represents the original clip. This line shows that it is fed into the first node. This line shows the output of that node is fed into the input of this node. The output of this node is the final output that's displayed here. Serial nodes are simply steps representing specific processing tasks. For example, contrast, color balance, or adding an effect. The good news is that serial nodes represent about 90% of what you're going to do with nodes. Right now, these two nodes are doing nothing, and you can tell because there's nothing on the node to show, and if you hover over a node with your mouse, it says so. With the first node highlighted, let's adjust the curves. See how there's now a visual indicator of the curves adjustment? Also see what it says now when I hover over it. Let's select the second node and adjust the contrast. Again, see that change in the node? You can also see it in the final picture. With this node still selected, let's add one more serial node. This time I'll use the shortcut Alt-S. Now I have a third node in the sequence. I think I'll adjust the color temperature. Okay, I have three adjustments that I've made. If I want to toggle on and off a node, I can simply click on the node's number. See how that affects the final picture? The shortcut for that is Ctrl D. If I select multiple nodes, then I can simultaneously toggle them all on and off with that shortcut. Usually it's a good practice to label your nodes so it's easier to see what they're doing. To do that, simply right click on a node and select Node Label. Then you can type in the label. Let me label all of them. Nodes can be moved around by clicking and dragging. If they get all messed up, you can right click anywhere in the node panel and select Clean Up Node Graph. To disconnect a node, click on the blue part of the connection arrow. To connect a node, simply drag and drop the arrow like this. To add a node between two others, simply drag it until you see the arrow light up, then let it go. Doing this makes it very easy to rearrange nodes as you like. You can use this slider to zoom in and out, and you can move around in the panel by middle clicking and dragging. To reset the entire node panel to the default, right click and select Reset All Grades and Nodes. Like I said before, Serial nodes represent about 90% of what you're going to do with nodes. However, you can also set up parallel nodes. To add a parallel node, right-click on a node and select Add Node, Add Parallel. The shortcut for that is Alt-P. This will add a second node that uses the same input source as the other node, and they output into a mixer node in equal parts. This is great to use if you don't want to use the output from the node you're currently working on. So for example, let's say I want to set up an orange and teal look. In node 1, I'll adjust the curves. In node 2, 
I'll cool down the offset, and in node 3, I'll warm up the lift. I'll add one more node on the backside to adjust the contrast. Now, toggling everything on and off, you can see how this has affected the final output. I'm Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel, and this has been an absolute beginner's lesson on the basics of how to use nodes in DaVinci Resolve. Like I said before, if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor and like it. And if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any future DaVinci Resolve tutorials. Thanks for watching. What that means is the output of one node becomes the input for the linear in three, two, one.